Hey guys, this is uh, Trenchy back again to bring you another video. This time we're doing another uh, third edition of Throw Me Thursdays. Yay! Um, start by Hey, isn't it Devon Graham, aka Andrew? I'll put the link down below. This time he wants us to do top five. Religious horror films, so horror films dealing with demons, religion, Jesus, you know, all that good stuff. Um, now I was looking at other people's Andrews, and I kind of see, hey, I'm the odd one out here. I obviously haven't seen a lot of religious horror films. I'm usually like that anyways. I haven't seen a lot of the horror films that a lot of these people in this community doing the challenge have. Because I'm not really horror community. I really love horror, but I'm not really horror community. So, I am i haven't seen every single, a lot of the rare ones and stuff. But, um, I think I have a good list here. So, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Uh... And I do love doing this, so I will keep doing this. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, number five, we got Conjuring 1 and 2. I couldn't, I couldn't decide, so this list is kind of a cheat. <laughs> this is kind of a cheat list. I got, you'll see, there's another cheat on here too, but, um, they came out, first one came out 2013, second one came out in 2016. Great movies, very well made, um, just the possessions in this movie are really cool. And well, you can't really go wrong with this movie. In the first one, you got the Satanist witch who is trying to kill the children in the family. And then the second one, you have the evil demon nun, Valak. That's very cool. And then I, I also love the line from the first one, God brought us together for a reason. Um, I'm not really a religious person, but I just really like... Um, I really like that line, and plus, I really like the relationship aspect of, um, the Warners. I really like how it focuses on their relationship without taking away anything from the movie. Like, they, they do a very good job at showing this, like, loving relationship without taking any, any aspect away from the horror movies. They don't, they don't overdo the relationship. They show enough, they show enough so that... We get a good mix of that relationship without taking away from the movie. And I love that. And this, these movies are just awesome. Modern day, modern day classics, it, you could say. Number four is Rosemary's Baby, 1968. Now, I'm surprised this didn't show up on many people's lists. But I, I can see why. It's kind of a more of a thriller film. But, what I really love this movie is this movie really takes a look at society and really breaks down some of the problems with society, and I love that. Um, and if you watch the film, you can see it. I also like the terror. It's kind of like the terror of, like, you have this thing growing inside of you and these people you keep invading your life and trying to put you down and put you down. It's just, it's just crazy. And the main, the main girl in this film, I really like her story arc. I really like how, especially the choice she makes in the end, what she chooses to do in the end, which they could have gone so many other routes with this, but I like that they chose this route because it makes sense with her character. It's unexpected. And it's just, it's more interesting than what they could have done. They could have done something more horror cliche and more, like, nasty and shit. But what they did was was pretty great. And if you watch this girl's character arc, it totally makes sense. Everything that happens to her, to her for the movie, you can see why she makes the decision she makes. So, yeah. Uh, Rosemary's Baby. Number three is The Exorcist. Uh, 1973. Um, I know people are going to be like, why is The Exorcist number three? Well, I'll tell you why. Um, I do really love The Exorcist, but the uh, two movies above it resonate with me more. Um, but no, the reason why Exorcist is here, obviously, very, 
very great demon in Reagan. You get to see this cute little girl, and they show her cute. You gotta do that. If you're gonna make children creepy, you gotta show them cute first, and then they become creepy, because that what makes it creepy. That makes it creepier. You can't... If you jump right into demon baby, okay, whatever. Cool, cool, but you gotta... You gotta show them cute first. So you get the you got Reagan, just this cute innocent little girl, gets possessed by a demon. All all of a sudden she's spewing pea soup over people. Shit get crazy. Other other thing I love about the story is there's an actual story arc for um the mother of Reagan. She has a decent story arc, and the priest. The priest has a great story arc. I love his story arc. I love how he has to actually. He doesn't just show up and be like, I'm going to exercise your child. You know, he actually has to go for a story arc of his own. He actually has to deal with the inner struggles of losing his faith and all that. And we actually get a lot of time on him as well. So we kind of see Reagan transform into his monster. Meanwhile, we see this priest kind of transform from this dude just trying to get by into this kind of hero and it's awesome awesome film um the exorcist definitely has earned its spot in horror history where it is now like i said there's two films that resonate with me more but this film is great um also it, it, it does make me laugh. <laughs> that I'll give it a bonus too. It does make me laugh. Um, and I will tell you the scene. It's not the scene where she's uh, jerking off with the cross. But it's like right after that. Where she's like. Suck my cunt. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> like lick it up. Like uh, I'm a, I have a six sense of humor. Me and my brother died laughing when we saw that. Um, we're, we're sick motherfuckers. <laughs> um, number two. On this list is The Omen, 1976. Again, the kid is cute. <laughs> if you're going to have these kids, like, doing this horrible shit, they got to be cute. <laughs> and the thing about this movie is it's the, it's the fucking Antichrist, man. It's the, it's the fucking Antichrist. Like, how, how do you get bigger than that? Like, I know Exorcist was probably the devil. I think that was just the demon or something. But, and this one's the fucking Antichrist. And there's a lot of great kills in this movie. Um, and like I said, it's scary because these people got to kill their child. And, well, they got to try to kill their child. And, uh, shit, the ending is fucking crazy. And just, shit, it's, it's the fucking Antichrist. Like... Just seeing the Antichrist as this cute little boy too. As this, this cute little boy, I'll keep going back to this. The, the, the fucking children are cute. The, the fucking kid is cute, so that's even more disturbing. It's not like the 2006 remake where the kid looks like he just came out of fucking the children of the corn or some shit. Or fucking this kid that is like hanging out in fucking Hot Topic. <laughs> I dress in all black with black hair. No, this kid looks like a fucking normal kid. <laughs> I don't know what the Omen remake was thinking. <laughs> but, great though. Uh, I really like it when that woman hangs herself in the beginning too. I thought that was like very cool. Like She looks at the dog and then you see her later on the ledge and she hangs herself. Um, uh, it's just kind of cool how it's kind of like he has like mental control over people and shit. Very, very cool movie, and, I don't know, it, it seems like some of the times the kid doesn't even know he's doing it, which, yeah, is even creepier. So, yeah, The Omen, my number two, and my number one, from 1994, The Stand, um, again, I'm cheating, I know this is a mini series, but I love it so much, um, I'm a huge fan of King, and this is one of his best works, definitely. And what it is, I like how it starts out as, like, just this regular, you know, apocalypse movie. This disease breaks out, people start dying. 
But then some, it turns out some of these people are immune. And what happens is this Randall Flag guy walks on the scene. The Dark Man, you know. And he starts recruiting some people and bringing them to Las Vegas. Meanwhile, other people start seeing this mother Abigail. They start having dreams of her, so they go to Colorado to meet up with her. And it's pretty much what happens is Randall Flag's pretty much the devil, the Antichrist, whatever you want to call him. And Mother Abigail is a prophet for God. So you got the good people and the bad people. And, and even the good people are like kind of like in the gray area too. And some of the bad people are in the gray area. So it's very, it's very interesting. And this movie has lots of memorable characters. Got Larry, got Stu, you got Nick, you got Nadine Cross, you got the Trash Man. One of my favorites. You got Randall Flagg. You got Franny. You got all these people. You got the you got the mentally challenged guy. Lots of lots of good characters. Um, you got the prisoner dude that's like Randall Flagg's right hand man. Um, lots of great characters in this movie, and it's like this epic battle between good and evil for the. For pretty much the future of humanity. And it's just epic and awesome and I love it. Um, the Stand will always be one of my favorite religious horror films. Because pretty much it's, 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 the, it's a horror film meeting an epic. And I love epics and I love horror films. And this is, uh, this is that combining. And I, I love it. Um, so, yeah, that's my list. Um, I do want to say something about the next week's 70s film list. Um, there will be some films on there that I will not be including. Um, because I have decided. and I watched Devon's video early. So I've had time to think about this. Um, I decided I'm not going to be including The Exorcist because I already included it here. Still a great film, but I want to show some more obscure films as well. Plus, there's some other films that resonate with me more in that um, time period. And second um, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Again, great film. Probably does deserve to be on the list, but, um, you know, it won't be on there because, again, doesn't, I love it, it's a great film, but it doesn't resonate with me as some of these other films I will be putting on the list, and I want to show some more obscure films as well. Now, there's going to be some heavy hitters on the list, of course, um, you will see that, there's going to be some good ones, but yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Uh, Exorcist and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre will not be in my next week frill me Thursday. So, but yeah, again, thank you to uh, Andrew. Let's call you Andrew uh, for letting me for letting me do this. You know, this is a really fun challenge. I like it so far. I will put your link down below, um, so people can check you out. Now I gotta go. Um, Stay frosty, everyone. This is Trenchy signing off. Beep, bop, boop.